What can you control? Hmm. A paintbrush, a video game, a basketball, a drone. Oh, a mixer. Yikes. All of these things can be a little tricky to control, but with practice, you can get really good. But you know what's the toughest thing to control? You. Some days, it feels like your thoughts, your words, and your actions are all running away with you. But with God's help, you can learn to control you. It starts with inviting God into your thoughts, planting His words in your heart, stopping to think before you speak, choosing to reflect before you act. Through the power of God's Spirit, you can speak and act in a way that shows love to others and to God. You can choose every day to live His way. That's why showing self-control is an amazing way to worship God with your life. Because worship is about more than just singing loud. It's all about living loud. Whenever I'm in need and I'm looking for help, God, you're always there for me. Wherever you lead me, I can follow you. God, you're always there for me. Oh, God, you're always there for me. Help me believe you know what's best for me. Feel it in my soul When you are in control I got one life to live And I wanna live it your way Oh yeah I do what I should do When you help me choose I got one life to live And I wanna live it your way Oh yeah I got one life to live And I wanna live it your way Oh yeah One life to live And I wanna live it your way Whenever I'm lost and I don't know where to turn God, you're always there for me Wherever I go, you're always by my side God, you're always there for me Oh God, you're always there for me So help me believe you know what's best for me Stop sign, a fork in the road Shaking my emotions, looking at my options Which way to go? It's a moment of decision, an opportunity To do what's right by you And what's best for me So maybe I will do just what I know that I should do Even when it isn't really what I'm wanting to I know there is a way that I can honor you And so I'm gonna do just 
a good decision yeah i'm gonna stop i'm gonna look and i'm gonna listen yeah and make a good decision i will do just what i know that i should do even when it isn't really what i'm wanting to i know there is a way that i can honor you Social studies, and foundations, science, Bible, math, and language arts. And mom said that she'll pay me if I if I get A's and B's. Maybe if I have higher grades and and go a lot faster if I cheat. Oh, 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 oh. But wait, does the Bible say I want to cheat? Let's check it out. Oh, we're live. Hey, everybody. I'm Jacob, and I'm very excited about what's in this box. I found it online and I had to get it. It's kind of a throwback to another era. And as much as I just want to rip into this box without thinking and just throw it everywhere, it's probably best if I exercise a little bit of self-control. <sighs> self-control is choosing to do what you should even when you don't want to. So I'm choosing to do a nice and slow controlled unboxing. Step one, very carefully cut the tape from the box. Step two, open the box. Oh. Slowly open the box and huh, what do we have here? Instruction manual. Very important. Not one remote control and the treasure of treasures. A VCR video set recorder. 
Let me just, uh, here. <laughs> now I can watch movies like our ancestors did. All I need is a video cassette. American Tale 2, Bible Goes West. Sounds pretty amazing. <laughs> All right, so now I just, I just pop that. No, 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 no. <laughs> oh, you know what? Where's the, oh. <sighs> I think I broke it. I don't understand. I thought that I was, I thought I was prepared. I, I don't know where I went wrong. Oh, I have got a remote control. I can just rewind. Oh, in today's story, we're going to rewind back to when Jesus spent 40 days in the desert. Don't worry. He was more prepared than I was. <sighs> See you soon. The Bible, it's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. And now for an amazing story, inspired by the book of Luke. Chapter 4, verses 1 through 13. After his remarkable birth, Jesus spent most of his years growing up in Nazareth. To others, he probably seemed like any other Jewish boy. He ran and played with the other kids. Catch! He worked in the carpentry shop with his father, Joseph. As he grew older, he studied God's word, the part of scripture we now know as the Old Testament. Worship the Lord your God. He is the only one you should serve. It was not until Jesus came to the Jordan River to be baptized by John that others began to realize how extraordinary he was. This is my son, and I love him. I am very pleased with him. 30 years of life had led Jesus to this point, where God himself announced that Jesus was the chosen one. It must have seemed like the perfect time for Jesus to begin doing miracles and gathering new followers. But that's not what happened. Instead, God's Spirit led Jesus into the desert for 40 long days. God, I trust you. I trust your plan. During this time, Jesus ate nothing at all. He focused on God as the one thing he needed above all else. But he wasn't alone, not quite, because the devil showed up. You must be hungry, so hungry. It was true. Jesus was desperately in need of food. You are human, after all. The devil refused to leave Jesus alone. He needled and tempted him at every opportunity. At the end of 40 days, he offered Jesus a smooth, heavy rock. If you are the son of God, tell this stone to become bread. Jesus stared at the round stone. He knew as God's son, he could easily turn it into a warm, crisp loaf of bread and just tear off just a large, chewy piece to instantly satisfy his hunger. But he knew every word God had spoken. It is written, man must not live only on bread. S Suit yourself. The devil wasn't finished. He led Jesus to a high place where the whole world appeared to spread out beneath them. Every powerful kingdom, every palace, every throne of all the rulers on earth, the devil smiled. He seemed reasonable in control. I will give you all their authority and glory. It has been given to me, and I can give it to anyone I want to. If you worship me, it will all be yours. Jesus didn't flinch. He knew he would rule all those kingdoms. And to take the easy way, he knew it would lead to disaster. And again, he spoke God's words. It is written. Worship the Lord your God. He is the only one you should serve. The devil narrowed his eyes and readied his last shot. He led Jesus to the city of Jerusalem. They stood upon the very highest point of the temple itself. 
The worshippers far below looked as small as beetles. The devil smirked. If you are the son of God, throw yourself down from here. It is written, the Lord will command his angels to take good care of you. They will lift you up in their hands. Then you won't trip over a stone. The devil's true question seemed to hang in the air. Does God really love you? Prove it. But once again, Jesus had God's own words at the ready. Scripture says, do not test the Lord your God. The devil seethed with rage. He couldn't trap Jesus. So he finally gave up and left until his next good chance. When the devil was gone, God sent angels to take care of Jesus and provide everything he needed. And because Jesus spent his entire life discovering what God said, when the time came, he was ready to make a wise choice. Huh. Let's find out where I went wrong, shall we? Full screen. Rewind. There. And play. Very important. Not. That was my mistake. Tossing out the instructions. If I want to use a VCR, first, I have to learn how to use a VCR. Makes sense, doesn't it? No? How about this? When Jesus was in the desert, he was tempted by the devil to do things he shouldn't do. But Jesus was prepared. He used things he'd learned from what we now call the Old Testament to help stand against temptation. Most of us probably won't spend 40 days without food in the desert, but we will definitely be tempted to do things that we shouldn't do. You might be tempted to yell at your little sister. You might be tempted to watch YouTube when you're supposed to be doing your homework. You could be tempted to eat that whole pizza instead of saving some for your friends. So what do we do? How do we control ourselves when we're tempted to do what we shouldn't? If you want to do the right thing, first, you have to learn the right thing. You need to be ready, prepared, and that means you need instructions. We can get instructions for life in all kinds of places. The Bible is an incredible place to look if you want to know how God wants you to live. And God has also placed people in your life that can help teach you the difference between right and wrong. It could be your parents, your teachers, your small group leaders. If we listen and learn, we'll be more prepared when temptation happens. So here's the one thing to remember today. Be ready to do the right thing. Learn now so you don't do something you regret later. I wish this thing could rewind real life. No, it's just a remote. I'll see you next time. Uh, I'm just reading this verse that says, that says, it's found in Luke chapter 4, verse 12. And it says, And Jesus answered him, It is said, You shall not put the Lord your God on the test. That means honoring your mother and father, and do not lie. That requires cheating, and it'll get you in big consequences. So, I'm going to study all this. How can you honor God today? Make sure to click like and subscribe and leave a comment. Because, because this is Spencer signing off. Because remember, God made you special, and he loves you very much. Bye! Happy New Year! That's what all of these fireworks are about, is the new year. We are starting fresh. I love when we have the new year because it means all the things that I didn't get done last year, I get to start all over and fresh this year. Maybe there are things that 
I didn't do very well last year. I get to try again this year. This first kids series is all about self-control. Now, I don't know about you guys, but sometimes I have a hard time with self-control. And so that's one of the things that I get to start trying to do better this year in the new year. Do you guys know what self-control is? If you've been thinking about it, or maybe you just started thinking about it with this new First Kids series, let's talk about it. Self-control is kind of like doing something that you know you should do, but you really don't want to do it. And so self-control can be hard. It's choosing what you should do even when it's hard. Doing what you want is easy. I'm going to give you an example. I'm going to give you an example from my life, but I'm thinking you probably have an example too. So um, there are times after dinner is done that I don't want to clean the, clean the table off and I don't want to do the dishes. And so I also don't like it sitting there. I would rather that it just be poof in the blink of an eye that it's gone. But self-control means that even though I'm tired, even though I don't want to clean the table and do the dishes, I do it. I do the hard thing. And sometimes I am really tired and don't want to do it. But the easy thing would be take my cup of coffee and go sit down and watch TV and pretend it doesn't exist, that it's all done. But that's not going to get it done. Self-control says I have to do the hard thing even when I'm tired. So I clear the table and I do the dishes and then the kitchen is all clean for the next day. And then, of course, when I walk in the next day, I'm really, really happy because it's all nice and clean. It's not sitting there all yucky from the night before. You might have an example like, I don't know, how about your room? Maybe you don't want to clean your room, but self-control is saying, my room needs to be clean, even though it's going to be really hard. It's Self-control, you're exercising self-control when you go ahead and do it, even though you don't want to. And we have a verse that talks about how God walks through the difficult things with us, even though we don't want to do it. He helps us with our self-control. So the verse comes from 1 Corinthians 10, chapter 10, verse 13, and I'm going to read it to you. It says, you are tempted in the same way all other human beings are. In other words, everybody has problems with self-control at some time or another. But the scripture says, God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted any more than you can take. It means God is faithful and he's always with you. And he knows how much self-control you have. And he knows that you can exercise your self-control to do what is hard. And then the last piece of scripture says, when you are tempted, God will give you a way out and then you will be able to deal with it. So God will help you with your self-control. Like when I don't want to do the dishes, God can help me. I can say, okay, God, it's you and me. Maybe I'll put some music on while I'm doing the dishes and that will help me to feel good and to do the dishes. Maybe you can do something like that too. When there's something that you don't want to do, maybe you can ask for God's help and turn on some music or sing a song and get done what you need to do. And then it's done. And you can be proud of yourself that you did it. And you can thank God for helping you. Take care. Have a great first week of the new year. Bye-bye.